An absolute throttling by the Quinnipiac men's basketball team against the visiting Marist Red Foxes tonight. A 79 to 53 victory for Tom Moore and company. Mari Hirschhorn alongside Dylan Fearon for yet another edition of the rebound here at Lender Court at the TD Bank Sports Center. We welcome you, Dylan. A 26 point victory. Quinnipiac was firing on all cylinders, including the bench. I mean, Andrew Robinson comes off early in the first half and hits five threes in the first half. Career night for the rookie. You saw Dimitri Flores, eight points, four assists, and no turnovers. Great night for him. Solid night. He's going to bed happy and confident to the next game. The bench had 27 points in the first half out of Quinnipiac's 47. Tamaris just five bench points in the first half. That was the key for Quinnipiac in the first half to get off on the right foot and take down Maris, who's lost 10 straight. Quinnipiac's bench outscored Maris 42 to 10 for the entirety of the game. Let's flip the script, though, from the offense to the defense. The defense played pretty well. And they've been playing well all season long. I mean, if you look at the top four scores in the MAC, Quinnipiac's played them a couple of times, and they've held, their, held those top scores to under five points uh, on their average for the year. I mean, you look at what they did against Marcus Gilbert. You look at what they've done against uh, Iona's A.J. English, even though he was a little hurt. You've seen what they've done against Justin Robinson. And tonight, against Brian Parker, who's seventh in the MAC, and Khalid Hart, who's second in the MAC in points per game, they held those two guys to just 20 points and seven for 28 from the field. When you do that, you put yourself in a good chance to win, and that's what Quinnipiac did tonight. The Bobcats held the Red Foxes to shooting just 27% from the field. A total domination, third straight victory. How's this Quinnipiac men's team feeling? They're feeling really good. I mean, every single game they play great defense, and they'll be in the game for 30, 32 minutes. But tonight they were in it for a full 40. They played great defense for a full 40. Their offense was complete. They were looking very sound. They were just playing dominant basketball against a team that's lost 10 straight, and they had to come out early and take down a Maris team that has been playing let's be honest, terribly in, in the past couple of months. And that's exactly what Quinnipiac did. They take that momentum into St. Peter's and Manhattan, two road games, two key road games that Quinnipiac really needs to win if they want to get that top five bye that Shays Daniels and James Ford say they're going to get. Shays Daniels, after the Niagara victory, the first victory of this three-game stretch, said they can finish top five easily. I asked them the same question in the press conference. James Ford Jr. said top four. I'm not going to say top three yet. Yeah, I don't know. It's still, it's still going to be tough. I mean, this is a nice three-game stretch. We've seen Quinnipiac playing consistent uh, for the past couple of years. You know, it's a nice three-game winning streak. Let's see what they can do against St. Peter's. Against the, a St. Peter's team that plays good defense is going to be a low-scoring affair. Quadri Welton's dominant inside uh, for the past couple of years. It should be interesting to see what Chase Daniels and Donovan Smith can do against him. And Travis Weish is a good point guard. We should see what kind of matchup we see against him with Giovanni McLean. With the big lead, Quinnipiac didn't have to play its forward, Chase Daniels, only 10 minutes. And that's a good thing because coming off the MCL injury against Monmouth, Niagara, and Fairfield, he had to log a lot of minutes. So going up against the interior of St. Peter's and then later on in the week against Manhattan will definitely prove dividends. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, they played three games in five days. That's a lot of minutes on your feet. That's a lot of time on the court. He really needed the rest, and it's very good. And, and going into Albany, going into later games in the season, that's going to benefit him and the whole team. Once again, Quinnipiac improves to 8-13 overall, 5-7 and seven in the Metro Atlantic Athletic Conference. Good for its third straight victory Monday night. It will be in New Jersey, in Jersey City, to face the St. Peter's Peacocks, another team just ahead of the Bobcats in the standings, and one that the Bobcats are aiming for to get that fifth and final playoff bye. Here at Lender Court, alongside of Dylan Fearon, I'm Mari Hirsch-Gordon. We'll see you next time.